The organic food industry is a booming business. Certified organic products typically have a higher price point and may even be smaller in size or different in taste. But what exactly does organic mean? Regulations vary from country to country, but according to the USDA, organic by itself isn't necessarily a health claim. It just means the food was produced using organic methods. These methods include a list of federal standards, addressing things like soil fertility, pest and weed control, and animal raising practices. But most people aren't actually aware of what it takes for a product to receive the USDA organic seal. In 2014, brand consultancy BFG surveyed 300 shoppers. 70% purchased organic food, and only 20% could define organic. Despite a lack of knowledge, demand for organic food is at a record high among consumers, and it's only going up. U.S. organic sales surged in 2020, jumping by 12.4% to $61.9 billion. With consumers being more health conscious than ever, they're willing to pay more for what they perceive as better, even if they're not quite sure that it is. In 2018, organic food and beverage items cost an average 24 cents more than conventional food. Some shoppers are doubtful of U.S. organic food claims. Several investigations over the years uncovering organic label fraud have exacerbated consumer suspicion. The USDA's National Organic Program, or NOP, has been stepping up on investigations and enforcement, suspending or revoking 370 operations in the U.S. in 2020 alone. But some say it's not enough. On the fraud issue, they have not been the ones that have been in the forefront. They're supposed to be preventing fraud uh, by the uh, enforcement of the rules. And time and time again, the horse is long out of the barn uh, before the National Organic Program is even aware that there's, there's a problem. Despite efforts to reduce fraud amid rising demand, many consumers still question, are organic foods safer? Are they more nutritious? And are they worth the price? Organic farming was first introduced as a concept called humus farming in the early 20th century in order to address soil erosion and depletion. These practices included composting, rotating crops, and applying animal manure. During World War II, food shortages accelerated agricultural advances by improving mechanization, fertilization, and pesticides. Synthetic fertilizers were affordably produced and machineries were quickly replacing manual labor. The term organic was coined in 1940 by Lord Northburn in his book, Look to the Land, where he talked about taking a natural and ecological approach to farming. He drew inspiration from Sir Albert Howard, whose decades of research led him to the concept that using waste material was vital for soil health. The Industrial Revolution helped the farmer farm more with a better plow and with a tractor and an engine instead of a horse drawn. And then we moved to how do we package and salvage and save this stuff for longer post-World War II. And oh, look at these chemicals. They, they work to, to decimate a jungle. What, would, what could a small amount of that do on a field? You know, that kind of thing. So, and we saw how great these chemicals were. But then we realized somewhere along the line, probably in the 60s, I'm assuming, and into the 70s, that hey, maybe we're doing detriment to ourselves. By the 1970s, environmental concerns increased and consumers began to demand more sustainable produce. In response, Congress passed the Organic Foods Production Act in 1990 to develop a national standard for organic food and fiber production. The final rules were written and implemented in fall 2002. This regulation defines organic agriculture as an ecological production management system that promotes and enhances biodiversity, biological cycles, and soil biological activity. Organic isn't a health claim. It's simply a labeling term that indicates the food has been grown following the federal guidelines of the FPA. According to the USDA, organic farming entails the use of manures, crop rotations, biological control, an emphasis on biodiversity, the use of rotational grazing, a reduction and elimination of synthetic pesticides and fertilizers, and a focus on renewable resources. As for livestock and poultry, the standards require that animals have access to the outdoors year-round, fed 100% organic feed, and not administered antibiotics or hormones. Consumers looking to shop organic 
may look for the USDA seal of approval. So let's talk about the different kind of labeling categories. Uh, you can have a 100% uh, organic uh, product. So for example, that organic uh, apple that you take off the shelf and eat, that's 100% organic. You can also have products that are 95% or more organic composition. And, and a product needs to have more than 95% in order to carry that USDA uh, seal. And so you might be talking about, for example, a, a granola bar that has um, different kinds of ingredients in it. If more than 95% of those ingredients are organic, it can use the organic seal. There's also a made with organic uh, category. So for example, macaroni and cheese. Um, it may be that uh, the cheese or the, the macaroni or some other component of a product is organic, but the rest of the product is not. Multi-ingredient products with less than 70% certified organic content cannot use the organic seal or use the word organic on the front of the food package. However, they can list certified organic ingredients in the ingredient list and the percentage of organic ingredients. Consumer demand for organic products is rising quickly, showing double-digit growth over the past decade in the U.S. As of February 2021, organic products in the U.S. can be found in nearly 20,000 natural food stores and nearly 75% of conventional grocery stores. And organic sales account for 4% of total U.S. food sales. The booming organic market in the U.S. can be attributed to a few things, namely the declining price gap between organic and conventional products. In 2018, organic food and beverage items cost an average of 24 cents more than conventional food. That was down from 27 cents in 2014, a nearly 2% drop. Organic produce seems to be getting cheaper for a number of reasons. For one, a rising dependency on fossil resources is causing the price of conventional foods to increase, while government subsidies keep the prices artificially low. And more private label retailers are getting in on organic foods, creating a downward pressure in the industry to reduce prices. There are tons of reasons why organic food is more expensive in the first place, but it all boils down to the fact that it costs more to produce. It takes more money and labor to adhere to the USDA's strict standards regarding production, handling, labeling, and storing. Not to mention, demand beats out supply. Farmers are just uh, not that interested in the organic standard. They don't. They see higher land costs, higher labor costs, and so not too many uh, make the make the switch. And that restricts the supply of organic, and that's why the price is so high. Over the past decade, shoppers have become increasingly more mindful of their health, and COVID-19 has accelerated those trends. According to a 2020 survey. 54% of all consumers cared more about the healthfulness of their food and beverage choices in 2020 than they did in 2010. Some health-conscious consumers gravitate toward organic over conventional products due to concerns about highly processed foods, artificial ingredients, and the effects of pesticides, hormones, and antibiotics. According to a study by Pew Research, 76% of adults surveyed bought organic foods for their health value followed by environmental concerns at 33% and convenience at 22. But there is conflicting data about whether or not organic foods are healthier or safer. Take for instance, pesticide residue. The consumption of pesticide contaminated food is a major source of human pesticide exposure. And according to a 2017 review in environmental health, our current levels of exposure to pesticides can lead to adverse effects on children's cognitive development. In adults, exposure to pesticides may also lead to the development of Parkinson's disease, fertility issues, and cognitive decline. It also mentioned that antibiotics used in conventional animal production is a key driver of antibiotic resistance in society. The average conventional apple in the United States today contains about four different pesticide residues. And science science is, is not at the stage where we can say with certainty what uh, daily exposures to four or five pesticides from food is doing to our children. But there is a broad consensus that it's probably not doing anything helpful However, there is some data that says otherwise. 
Organic does not mean that the produce is grown without any pesticides. A few naturally occurring pesticides are approved by the USDA. Research in 2005 at the University of California suggests that the negative public perception of pesticides is overblown and that the pesticide residue in both organic and conventional crops are too low to have any adverse effects on health. Maybe uh, conventional food has a very low exposure for a pesticide residue and it's not a problem, but maybe organic food has an exposure level that's even lower. So it's not a problem either. I conclude that both are safe and you should be making your, your food choice on, on the basis of, of something uh, more substantial. While there's a lot of discrepancy about whether organic is safer and healthier long-term, many agree that organic food isn't better in terms of nutritional value. The Environmental Health Review concluded that there was no significant difference in nutrition between organic and conventional crops. An orange that's grown conventionally and an orange that's grown organically, I think they're gonna have the same vitamins in them. I really do. I've, I've been an orange grower all my life and uh, we haven't changed much from when, when dad did it. Organic food is not healthier or safer for you. Whether it's organically grown or conventionally grown, it's gonna have the same nutrient content. Now there are situations where you may find an organic orange say may have 10 millimolar milligrams of say vitamin C in it, theoretically. It means absolutely nothing to you as far as your health goes because of the conventional orange, orange, let's say, has 95 milligrams of vitamin C in it. And let's say an organically grown orange may have 110 milligrams or 105 milligrams of vitamin C in it. Well, your body doesn't need either one of them. It only needs about 35 milligrams of it. You don't need anyway. It's like driving down the road and you have a full tank of gas and you see a gas station and you say, oh, I'm going to pull in any more gas. Well, there's no point because your gas tank's full. Some studies conclude that there simply isn't enough strong evidence. Many people uh, ask me, is organic food more nutritious than uh, uh, conventional food? Obviously, that's a complex question, and it varies between, say, animal products like meat, milk, and eggs, and fruits and vegetables or, or grains. But in general, for all plant-based foods, organic food has between 20 and 25 percent higher levels of what's called antioxidants. Now on the animal side of agriculture, which is you know roughly half the calories that the typical American consumes in a day, the biggest differences with organic farming are in the fatty acid profile in meat and eggs and milk and dairy products. And these differences are significant. At the height of the pandemic, organic grains like rice and pasta were flying off the shelves, mainly due to their long shelf life. Harvesting and selling organic grains is big business. It demands a higher price because it costs more to produce. To earn the National Organic Seal, the plants cannot have been genetically modified, and they must be grown without the help of unauthorized fertilizers, weed killers, or pesticides. But who's verifying this? There are about 75 third-party agencies certified by the USDA to inspect over 16,000 organic farms in the U.S. These private inspectors perform annual audits that include questioning, reviewing documents, and examining records, but rarely does it mean actually testing the soil or produce. Certifying agents are only required to test 5% of their total operations per year. This process largely relies on the honor system and an ethical seller can pass off cheaper conventional grown grain for the more expensive organic kind and make a huge profit. And some are doing just that. In 2017, a Washington Post investigation revealed that non-organic soy and corn labeled as organic was flooding the U.S. About 36 million pounds of conventional soybeans imported from Ukraine and Turkey were originally priced like regular soybeans, but by the time they reached California, they had been labeled as organic boosting their value by $4 million. 61-year-old Randy Constance was sentenced to 10 years in prison in 2019 for the largest organic fraud case in U.S. history. However, there is a broad consensus that imported produce is more likely to be fraudulent than domestic-grown crops. The organic fraud in grain started because of the high demand for especially eggs and, and meat and the fact that domestic production could not keep up with the demand. 
they started looking overseas and the first place that they went uh, that had open holes was the, the Ukraine. And the Black Sea region has continually been a uh, problematic area because of Black's oversight. The rapid growth of the organic food market, higher potential for fraud, and increased funding has allowed the NOP to significantly increase its enforcement staff over the past year. In February 2020, the NOP launched an online complaint portal to make it easier for consumers to file complaints. There were 676 operations in 45 countries in 2020 that were suspended or revoked, which is lower than the 722 suspended or revoked operations in 2019. John Bob, former executive director of O Farm, says they could be doing more. If the USDA or NOP comes across a fraudulent shipment, they have no authority to stop it. They were given a clean slate with money to draft uh, new rules with stronger enforcement. They were given the authority. So what did they do? They spent the money on uh, the, the low fruit, the easy stuff, upgrading their organic integrity database. We have caught bad guys, both domestically in the United States and overseas. So as an example, recently we worked closely with Customs and Border Protection, which is the federal agency that protects imports, uh, to block uh, incoming shipment of, um, of cooking oil, of oil uh, that was shipped by a suspended operation. And so that's an example of how we have blocked uh, fraud coming into the United States. Uh, and there have been some uh, very public stories of um, organic fraud where people in the United States have paid fines or gone to jail uh, by defrauding the American public. Again, our job is to make sure an organic is a choice that can be trusted by consumers across the country. Despite a lack of significant data, experts say the organic food industry is here to stay. The overall consensus from farmers and experts is to put less focus on the USDA organic seal and instead eat more fruits and veggies from your local farmer. The problem isn't the food in the marketplace, it's the fact that uh, not enough Americans purchase uh, fresh fruits and vegetables. As I've said, we only consume one-tenth the fresh fruits and vegetables that we should be consuming for, for dietary health. Do I think everybody should purchase organic over conventional? I think everybody should eat fruit and vegetables from their backyard, meaning the farm that's closest to you. Support your local farmers. Eat as much as you can locally, and then enjoy what you want globally.